Thank you guys for coming. My name is Frank Greco. I'm a cloud native engineer at Northwestern Mutual in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. If you haven't done so, you can check out our booth. Uh, we're not a vendor, but we are showing off how we do Kubernetes at scale, uh, talk about Canali, and maybe attract some talent along the way. So Northwestern Mutual built a nice tower, opened earlier this year. All right. I do, I do. 27th floor. It's 32, so IT gets the top floors. Um, so I'm here to talk about Canali, which is an open source API gateway, uh, Kubernetes native, cloud native. So the plan is to uh, blow through a bunch of slides, do a demo, and then leave plenty of time for questions, because I'm sure you guys will have plenty. And so um, the first thing I want to talk about is APIs, why APIs, why an API gateway, et cetera. Um, brush up on some of the terms if you haven't um, dealt with them a while or introduced them if you haven't. Um, so we'll start with a simple example. So let's say you have a Google Home uh, and you want to talk to a Nest. Uh, what you'll do is you'll actually go through, um, Google Home will call the Nest services and then the Nest services will talk to the Nest for you. Uh, but what's going to happen is it's going to go through a little piece of software called an API gateway, and that's going to make sure that um, you're not maybe uh, calling the API, um, make sure you know, it rate limits it, maybe does some transformation. Uh, you get all these things that come with what's called API management. Uh, so things like API, API key authorization, you know, JDBT authorization, uh, you know, rate limiting transformation monitoring, routing tracing, et cetera. And it's this piece of software, it's one piece of software, it's a gateway, and it's the entry point to all of your APIs, and then traffic goes from the gateway to your backend services. So some common examples of those in the industry uh, might be Apigee, the Azure API Gateway, MuleSoft, Kong, um, the AWS API Gateway. So um, if pictures help you associate vendors to uh, solutions, think of these when you think of an API gateway. Um, and this is what Canali attempts to solve, and we'll talk about it more in a little bit. So that's what an API gateway is. Um, so now I'm going to take you through a little bit of history on API management at Northwestern Mutual and how we've um, evolved from where we were two years ago on Kubernetes.9 to where we are today with Canali in production. Um, so here we have two VPCs. This is the setup that we have for our um, Northwestern Mutual website. So here we'll have um, a VPC on the left and a VPC on the right, and we'll peer them. And we'll have, our, um, we'll have our micro apps or the apps that are running our UI in one VPC, and then we'll have our Kubernetes cluster in another. And so here we'll have our cluster. And the way we started out is we gave every Kubernetes service an ELB, and we exposed it via node port. Um, and then this blob of squares represents the vendor that we were using, and all traffic from uh, the left VPC would go through uh, our API management solution. And it is outside of the context of Kubernetes. It's a separate vendor. And then traffic would get routed to the appropriate ELB. And then the ELB would route traffic to the service. Um, the problem was it got pricey over time. Uh, as we scaled the number of services, each service needed its own ELB. And so we needed a better way. And so we did what um, lots of people in the community did, is uh, we had an ingress controller. And then we threw one ELB on top of it. And then service would go from the um, API management vendor solution through the ELB onto the ingress controller. And then based on context route and some other, um, some other items, traffic would, get, would land on whatever Kubernetes service you wanted. Um, and so then you got rid of the price. Now, um, this may look all, in, all well and good, but what it's not showing you is the mess that may or may not be like the vendor solution. Um, so what happens is when you have a cloud native tech stack, um, you want the tools that um, service your application to be as cloud native as possible. Um, and so if you're using a vendor as an API gateway that's outside of the context of Kubernetes, you lose a lot of insight that you can get from having something running inside of the context of Kubernetes. And then because it's maybe not a cloud native solution, it's different and hard to automate. You may need like two or three different types of databases to store the information. Um, and it's hard to integrate into your, um, into your pipeline. Uh, in your CI CD model, because now you, you may be forced to configure stuff through the UI when you want to do them as code. Um, and so there's a big mess um, of stuff, and it didn't really fit well with the cloud native approach that we wanted to take with our um, environment. And so we thought that we could create a 
um, an open source solution for this. And if we were going to create an open source solution to solve this problem, we had some design goals, some very high level design goals. Um, so one, it had to be innovative. So we needed to be solving a, we need to be solving a problem, not only in the context of Northwestern Mutual, but also solve a problem in the context of the larger open source community so that we can contribute it back and that others could benefit from it. It needed to be lightweight, so it needed to be um, just minimal resources, um, minimal you know, amount of pods if it's in Kubernetes running and it's just stupid simple to deploy, um, very easy barrier to entry. Performance centric, so this probably goes without saying it's a middleware component, so um, it needs to be very performant. Uh, robust API key management at the heart of any you know, API management tool. Um, this is a big piece of it, so we needed to have a robust Kubernetes native way to handle it. You needed to have an extensible plugin framework, so um, again, you'll also see this with API management vendor solutions. Uh, it's maybe not a good idea to hard code um, every single possible thing that you might want to do into an API gateway, but create a way where other people can add their own functionality. So if they want to do their own complex transformation for their business use case, um, for example, they can do so. Um, it needs to be Kubernetes native. So um, Kubernetes is all about its metadata. Um, and it, it, when you have your gateway in the context of Kubernetes, you can do some pretty cool stuff with um, canary routing um, and also uh, things, well, so we'll look at in a second, but um, you know, custom resource definitions, so you're able to create um, Kubernetes native specifications, um, and you get things like storage for free. Diverse tooling. Um, so the gateway is just one piece of it, but you can't have a full API management solution without tools for tracing, analytics and monitoring, automatic API key generation, et cetera. So uh, it needed to have this whole ecosystem of tooling around it. Um, and needed to be easy to automate. And this is one thing that we did not get with our vendor solution that we were using before. Um, and by easy to automate, it, not just that it needed to be easy to automate, it needed to fall in line with the same patterns that we were using for our existing um, cloud native automation. So um, that spawned Canali. Um, logo's very new, and there's uh, stickers at the sticker table in our booth, so feel free to pick some up. We have a lot of them. Um, so what is Canali? Uh, Canali is a lightweight Kubernetes native API gateway that together with robust network policies, or together with network policies, provide a robust open source solution to Kubernetes ingress, API management, and API security. So I'll talk a little bit, break this down a little bit as we go through the next couple of slides. Um, but first I wanna go back to the picture that we looked at before and look at how with Canali this picture changed. So basically, um, Traffic would all go through the ELB, and now we'd be running our API management um, solution, um, which would also do our ingress for us, and traffic would land on one of the pods, and um, it would get routed to the service. So the complexity reduced tremendously, um, resulting in a lot less infrastructure needed, um, and then yeah, so, so now, now let's look at some of the differences between a gateway and a service mesh. Um, so a lot of you have probably went to talks about service mesh talks, so Istio, Envoy, Linkerd, et cetera. So here we have Canali at the top, and then we have our three um, application pods on the bottom. And this is what we want to happen. We want everything to go through Canali, our API management layer, and traffic to land on a pod. But the problem is, is that this is also possible by default, and this is not desirable because Service, service on the left could talk to service on the right and not get managed, um, not get verified you know, with the API key, et cetera. Um, but Kubernetes provides a native construct for us to fix this, and that's network policies. So we can throw these lines in here and say, hey, only traffic is allowed to come from Canali, and so it'll make this, um, it'll, it'll make this, this traffic not possible. Um, and so with this, we're able to take, we're able to completely get around a service mesh and make our clusters a lot more um, lightweight and just have the gateway model. All right, so um, I mentioned Canali is lightweight, and when you think of an API management solution, um, rate limiting and quota come into there. Um, some people think of quota as a subset of rate limiting, um, but just take that and, or take that as a, whoever you think about it. Um, but we needed a lightweight way to basically enforce this across uh, multiple pods. So 
if you're using a vendor as an API management um, solution or basically just like you know, this monolith application, um, it can um, you know, check its database, get an information back, then proxy the request. Um, but one thing Canali boasts is zero network overhead on any request. Um, so when you get an incoming request, the only network traffic that happens is the actual proxying to the backend application and back. Um, and so basically, Canali implements a eventually consistent um, method to do, base, uh, to do uh, rate limiting. And so what'll happen is we'll have an incoming request here on the right. It'll hit one of the Canali pods. That pod will talk to etcd over gRPC, and then um, via gRPC, it will let the other Canali pods know that it has um, had a traffic point, and then it's able to update it sufficient in-memory store, and um, we have eventually consistent um, rate limiting. Um, so this etcd is different than the actual Kubernetes etcd, um, or at least that's the recommended approach. Um, so Canali is open source. Um, open source, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very new project. It's like two months, um, two months old. Um, we've gotten some good um, traction on it so far, um, and it will continue to grow. Um, but now let's dive into how Canali works from like a user side of it. Um, and this gets into more of the custom resource definition side. Um, Canali's uh, a couple weeks away from a, uh, a 2.0 release, and so the specs will be 2.0 specs um, that we'll be looking at. So um, just to give a brief about um, custom resource definitions, um, not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but um, as you probably know, um, Keynote mentioned it this morning, but Kubernetes is a very API-driven um, application. Um, and there's three parts to every um, API. There's a group name, a version name, and a resource name. And so, like, if you look at the change log, you know, things might be moving from um, one version to the next. Um, a resource may be graduating to a different version, um, or they may be moved around to different groups. Um, I think 1.8 did some of that. Um, and Canali does the same thing. So Canali has um, a group name, Canali.io, um, versions, and then resource names. And it has four major resources, which we'll look at. Um, but this is basically how it extends the, extends the API. So the major spec is the API proxy spec. And these three examples provide examples of a lot of the functionality, not all the functionality. Um, but the main thing to note is the different type of backends that you can do. Um, so uh, Canali allows you to proxy to services inside the cluster, allows you to proxy to services outside the cluster, and allows you to proxy to um, mock targets, um, which define mock responses that can be returned. Um, and this is key for, um, or the, the most interesting here is the middle one, is the external endpoint. So as a large organization, um, we'll have a lot of our services running inside of Kubernetes, but what about all the services that are running maybe on legacy applications? You're still gonna need some API gateway solution to do those, right? Um, but with, if you think about it, you can still proxy traffic to legacy applications, but still have part of that as a cloud native. So you can take your API management piece and make that cloud native, and it has a lot of benefits because you get things like storage for free, um, you get cloud native configuration or Kubernetes native configuration, um, you get a nice pipeline around permissions as code, which we'll look at in a second. Um, but that's something that, um, that is cool and will be new in uh, 2.0. But um, the other thing you'll see here is, um, and we'll talk about plugins some more in a little bit, but um, you'll notice a plugin section, and this says what plugins will get executed on every response or on every request. Um, and one of the big things for us is we needed a way to have version controlled plugins. And that was something that uh, was a foreign concept to different products that we had looked at. Um, so here we're saying that we're going to use an API key plugin on every request. We're going to use this version of this plugin. Um, and then we're going to pass in some arbitrary configuration um, to this plugin that the plugin will need to do its logic. Um, and it's a list of plugins. You can create plugins, you can add them to your proxy. Um, and it will run in a synchronous manner. Um, so this is the API proxy spec. Uh, we'll see a demo of this in a little bit. Uh, but next is the API key binding spec. So Canali follows an RBAC-like um, approach. So um, we have API keys, which are, abstract from, um, which are abstracted from proxies. And then you have API proxies. And then you need something that basically binds a set of keys to a proxy. And that's what the API proxy spec does. And it basically says, Here's a list of keys that have access um, to this binding. In this example, we're giving Bob's API key access. We're saying that 
Whoever uses this binding, Bob's API key is able to call this proxy 100 times a second. And by default, they have access to everything. Let them, let them call everything. Except if you come in on the slash balance subpath, then we're only going to give you um, permission to use the, uh, to use the get HTTP method. Um, this is just a simple example of how you can configure, um, how you can configure permissions. Um, but notice that it's completely abstract from the, um, from the API proxy. Um, another thing that we're doing in V2 here on the right with the API key spec is we needed a way to enforce, or not enforce, but um, to allow for non-breaking API key rotation. Um, and so we, follow, we bounced back and forth a few ideas um, on GitHub, and ultimately we um, landed on this one. But um, say you have an active API key and you need to rotate that, you'll basically create another version of, or revision of that API key and make it active. And then you'll keep the old one active until teams are able to update their projects, at which point you'll make it inactive, um, and then eventually remove it from the spec. Um, but this allows um, non-breaking API key rotation um, in the API key spec. Um, then there's a the mock target spec, which I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on, but if you do use the mock target backend option, um, just way to configure a mock response. Um, Canali is a Go program, um, so this just shows how you can configure Go. Um, if any of you are Go developers, it uses Cobra and Viper, um, so standard configuration you can do off of that. Um, so plugins, so um, Canali uses the Go pack or the, the Go plugins package for plugins, um, and the only requirement is that it implements the plugin interface, and you can do whatever you want within that, um, with, within these functions that'll get called in the lifecycle request, and um, it will execute. Um, you can version these. Um, so for example, the API key plugin is stored in the separate repository um, that is dynamically brought in when Canali starts um, and, and the logic executes. And then we'll bring in the version that we want. And so if someone else wanted to design their own plugin, they would create a project, implement the plugin interface, um, they would change the configuration and, and then dynamically load that plugin at runtime and then, or yeah, at runtime and then it would execute their logic. So decoupled, extensible plugin framework um, where they can do whatever they want. There's the Yoman template, which, which does some of it. So um, tooling, and we'll see more of this in the demo. Um, but um, the first tooling is, you know, we need a way to automatically create API keys. Um, and so we do that with Canali Cuddle, um, which is a CLI tool for Canali. Um, and we use this extensively at Northwestern Mutual, and developers seem to like it, um, seems to make their lives easier. Um, but it's just a binary that we distribute and allows them to create API keys and then they're able to add it to the cluster. And um, because API keys mean nothing until they're actually bound, we're able to let developers create the API keys and then go to the service team and say, hey, here's my API key, add it to your, add it to your service. Um, and that model's worked for us. Um, but it's also uh, permissions as code too. And we'll see a demo of this. Um, next, we use Grafana and InfluxDB for um, for um, analytics and monitoring. Um, and Grafana is completely configurable. The default dashboard comes with like response time, total requests, error rate, stuff like that. Um, and then we use open tracing. Um, Jaeger comes out of the box with it, but um, the main part is open tracing. So it works right out of the box with open tracing. So it'll play nicely in that, in that uh, life cycle. Um, and then it's, Jaeger's the default client for that. All right, so let's do a demo. Um, so how am I doing on time? Doing all right. All right, so I have, um, I've went to the Canali GitHub page and I've executed um, the quick start steps here. So I've started Minikube. Um, I have, uh, so I've flown the project, I've started Minikube. Um, I've spun up Canali as well as Jaeger and Influx and Grafana, et cetera. Um, and I basically have this just to, just to make sure it's working here, I have, um, all right. So I have a deployment that just, uh, um, is that big enough for everyone? So I have a deployment, just a simple service, just returns, just tr returns a simple message when you hit it. Um, and then I have an extremely simple version of an API proxy. Now, now this is a V1 spec, it's very similar, some subtle differences, but um, basically I'm coming in on slash KubeCon, um, and that basically, with this configuration, the only thing it's doing is ingress for me. Um, so if I go here to my cluster, and hopefully everything's still running, awesome. Um, if I do kubectl apply, I'm just gonna apply this, and then try to curl the service. 
I'll get a response. Um, I'm just using post will be used for a, pre or a future example, but I, I have my ingress working. Um, so now let's go ahead and basically add some API key management to this. Um, so I'm going to go and create an API key. So I'm going to use Canali Cuddle, and I'm going to create an API key. I already have this command saved somewhere. All right, so I'm going to create an API key. I'm going to call it Frank's API key. I'm going to give it the name, to, or I'm going to give it the location of the public key, and I'm going to save it to um, this file. All right, so here's my API key that I'm going to use. Um, the actual API key spec has been saved here. Um, so I can open this up in my editor. And there's the API key that it created for me. I can go ahead and add this to the cluster. All right, so now I've went ahead and added this API key to my cluster. Now I can go back to my specification. And I can basically say, um, so now that I have my key, I'm going to go ahead and enable the API key plugin on this proxy. And I'm going to create a binding, which basically is going to bind Frank's API key to this proxy. Um, I, by default, I'm going to let it call everything over the git method. Um, but if you come in on the foo sub path, um, you, can only, um, you can only call it via the post method. So basically, um, it, it, it works by finding the highest priority rule. Um, so if there's no, if, it's, if the incoming request isn't overwritten by a subpath, um, then it's going to fall back to whatever the default rule is. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this. All right, so that's applied. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and try to, um, try to curl this service. And it's going to say that API key is not found in request. And this is enforced by the actual um, um, by the API key plugin. So I'm going to go back to where I configured the key, which is right here, and I'm going to add a header. And I'm going to call it API key, and then I'm going to set it equal to the value. And then it's going to give me my, um, my response. Now if I change this, and let's say, so I was using the post method. If I use this as the get method, we'll see that API key is unauthorized, and why? So if you see my subpath, it's slash coupon slash coupon slash foo bar. Now slash coupon is the incoming path, um, but we're overriding the target to a slash. Now here we're saying anything that starts with slash foo, we're only going to give post access to. And the incoming request matched this subpath, um, so it knows that it only has access to post and not get, and so that's why, um, that's why the traffic or the API key was not authorized. Um, so now we're going to um, we're going to we're going to um, curl this service a whole bunch of times, and it doesn't matter if it's uh, doesn't matter if it errors out. I just want to show. Well, actually, I want to show Jaeger, so maybe it does. API key equals this, and then we'll set the method equal to posts. Okay. So we'll have this go a couple times. Now, as this is going, we'll go over to Jaeger. And just by default, out of the box, um, you'll, you'll, you'll get your tracing with it. Um, so um, if you've went to any uh, tracing talks, um, specifically around Jaeger, they're great talks. Um, but here we see the overall span. We see the actual plugin on request lifecycle hook happening. And we see that Frank's API key is the API key being used. Um, because the backend service also instruments open tracing, we can see the actual request hitting the backend. Um, which is this right here, um, et cetera. So um, the talk, this talk's not about open tracing, but um, it does come with open tracing out of the box. And if I look at my metrics in Grafana, um, I can see um, some metrics start to come across, um, total requests, average proxy response time, et cetera, response time percentiles. So, um, so yeah, it's a, it's a very brief demo. Um, so future work, um, so v2.0 is like, one or two weeks away, um, but everything's tracked via the normal, um, the normal open source flow. Everything's tracked by issues, um, et cetera. So, give the demo. Um, so there is a um, tutorial at tutorial.canali.io. Um, this is where the documentation lives now. Um, it'll probably be ported, um, ported to something else in the future. But for right now, this is where it lives. 
All right, so I think I have five minutes left. Um, so I'm gonna ask the first question, so what about Istio? Um, so earlier, um, I hope I kind of justified this a little bit, but um, Canali is not a service mesh. It is an API gateway. Um, and so because it's not a service mesh, um, it does separate itself apart. Um, but then also, um, it's not an API management tool. Um, Canali is um, one of the only ones that I know of outside of Kong that is actually an actual API management tool. Um, Istio does have plans in the future to add API management to their product um, or to the project. Um, and when that's done, um, we will see what comes about it. Um, but I know it's more for um, vendors to be able to hook in their specific API management to it um, to fall in line with that life cycle. Um, so Canali is an API gateway, not a service mesh. Um, it's a very lightweight one and everything is fully included. So you get the API key management, you get the API proxy, you get the binding, everything is out of the box. You get storage for free because it's Kubernetes um, because of the custom resource definition. Um, and it, it, when, you, when you start to think about Istio is versus what Canali is, um, the differences are very different. So, um, so yeah, so at that, let me answer whatever questions you have and we'll start, yes. Um, correct. So it's so it's not a service mesh, and lightweight meaning uh, it's it's just one pod. It is the Canali pod, and that's it. Yes. Um, so HTTP is the only protocol that it supports right now. Um, there's uh, future work to add other protocols, um, but we just wanted to get it out the door. And currently, it only supports HTTP or HTTP. Um, it might support HTTP2 as well, because I, I believe by default the native Go HTTP library supports HTTP2. I don't. I don't believe so. No. Um, we have it in the back there. Support what? Oh, so um, there is no official JDBT plugin yet. Um, there will be that one that comes, but that's the thing with the extensible framework is the framework's there and you can build whatever you want. So there, like, the JDBT would be a plugin that would, that would live in its own repo that would be included in. So when you really use a service mesh like Istio and it has its own open basin, mm -hmm. does it combine with the basin you created? Would you be able to see the... So the beauty, is, the, the beauty is with open tracing is you don't, it doesn't matter how many pieces are in the puzzle. As long as you play nice and Handle, handle the context as it comes in and then pass the context along when you're done with it. Whatever downstream may, if, if, if someone else wants to do something with it, they can. Um, but Canali plays nice in that flow. Will, it, 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 it will accept and, and use and then it will also you know, start if not or and pass along, so yes. Um, so I say one pod, but it's one like deployment. So it's it's one. So um, in our deployment, we run it as a daemon set, um, but you could run it as a deployment as well. Um, but it's it's like one, uh, like there's only one container. Uh, yeah. Correct. Correct. But it's 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 a it's a replicated pod. Uh, in the back, I think we had. Did you have a question? Oh, yep. Correct, so API, so it, Canali at its best is an API management solution, but API management, or the API gateway is also a proxy. Um, the thing that I didn't show is Canali does do, uh, it, it does canary routing um, as well and dynamic backend service routing. Um, so you do get some of that as well, um, but yeah. Yep, so, so we've been running Canali in production for a few months now. Um, we, I think there's been times during our batch job where we'll be running like 300 TPS. Um, and it's, I, I don't, I don't know if we've hit it with a lot of load past 300 TPS, but um, it's, it, it's been running in production at times at 300 TPS, so. So 
So it's Kubernetes native. So um, when you're inside of the context of Kubernetes, you can do very powerful things. But then also by using custom resource definitions, you get storage for free. The way you configure it is Kubernetes native. Um, everything about it is like, it's like Kub that, that Kubernetes native, cloud native uh, format. And so like, like with the AWS API gateway, like that's abstracted from Kubernetes and so you lose the context, but then you also have to worry about how all that's managed behind the scenes. And then if it's, and then like in a cloud native context to be portable, you'd, you'd have to revisit your, your solution. Um, so, so we're running V1 in production right now. V2 will introduce the SCD gRPC. Um, and, and, and so we don't have V2 in production yet. Um, but yes, it, it will be another one. The reason why it's not recommended to use the same etcd as Kubernetes is because if you have access to the etcd that Kubernetes uses, you have root access to the cluster. Um, and so it's, it's always, I mean, even with other solutions that use ex separate etcds like Calico, they recommend separate etcd. So there's, no. um, so Canali's Greek for canal. And so like all of these projects, Canali open, or Kubernetes open source projects all follow like the nautical theme and they find a word and they turn into Greek. So Canali's Greek for canal and it's kind of like that canal into the cluster. But yeah. Plugins Correct. Um, so there's probably um, um, opportunity to also have them write in C and then port them to go and whatnot, but yeah. And the way that'll work is they'll be uh, in V2, they'll, they'll be like a requirements, like .yaml file or whatnot, where you say like, here's the plugin, here's the version. Um, Canali will use like an init container to load them in and start the Canali pod, and you'll be good. Yep. To make the what? Yeah, so uh, right now it uses Influx out of the box. Um, but there's no reason why it couldn't use like Prometheus or, or something else. Right now it's not pluggable, um, but it, it, yeah, it, 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 sh it should be in the future. You mentioned lightweight. Mm -hmm. What's the overhead of the gateway in your entire system? In terms of? Well, you mentioned 300 TPS. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the CPU cost. Yeah, so CPU. So um, it, at load, we'll see each instance of a Canali pod use like half a CPU. Right. Um, and uh, probably like a gig of memory. Um, it's, it, we're, every, every version it gets tweaked as we find different ways to improve on it. Um, but that's, 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 that's the V1 production numbers. Can I also able to do SSL? Yes, so, um, so Canali does do SSL termination. If I look, I, I believe it was in the spec. Um, you were able to specify an SSL object and it basically, you, you give it the secret name, and it's a type kubernetes.io slash TLS. It enforces the cert and the key, and if ca.cert um, is present, it'll be bidirectional SSL. So, I believe we're out of time. Thank you guys very much. Um, I can answer questions after.